Thanks for dropping in. When 3D printing typography, the conventional wisdom is, in order to get the best possible result, you want to print the text vertically, as opposed to flat on the print bed. But is this truly, actually, really the best orientation? Why, yes it is. Okay, so it's not exactly that simple. A vertical orientation does tend to give you a higher quality result, but there are exceptions to that rule. In this video, we're going to talk about why, in general, this orientation is preferred, and when it's best to totally abandon that guideline. The first thing to keep in mind is that 3D printing is essentially a robotically controlled hot glue gun. You've got some sort of thermoplastic that's melted and pushed through a nozzle and that nozzle has some specified diameter to it. It's very difficult, although not entirely impossible, to print a line that is thinner than that hole. Let's pretend for a moment that you want to print this letter W, and the black dot here represents the nozzle from your 3D printer. Let's say it's 0.4 millimeters, which is a very common size. We're gonna start by running along the edge of the letter. Now when we reach the bottom of the W here, we're obviously not going to be able to fill this sharp corner with a round shape, but frankly it's close enough and no one would really notice the difference, so I wouldn't consider that a problem yet. Now we're going to run along and we hit this thin leg to the letter. Fortunately the nozzle is smaller than the leg, so that's not a problem yet. We're just going to run down. And now we hit our first major immediate problem, and that's the serif part of the letter, the sort of fancy end. You see that the serif is actually thinner than the nozzle itself. So we either are going to keep on printing, causing the serif to be thicker, chunkier than it's supposed to be, or just stop midway and not print that section at all. We go across to the other side of the letter, we hit the exact same problem again. Considering that this letter has six serifs, this is quickly going to turn into a different shape than the one we expected. As it goes down this thin leg, remember it's already laid down a bead of plastic along this side. There's not enough room for it to lay down another strip of plastic beside it, at least not while staying within these lines. It either needs to run along that strip and make this leg thicker, or totally skip by it, making this leg too thin. Sometimes a space like this might have enough room for two lines of, of plastic to be laid down, but not enough for a little middle space in between, leaving a gap. And depending on your slicer settings, it may or may not be able to deal with that discrepancy. So as you see, when printing flat on the printer bed, you can quickly find a lot of compromises with the size of the nozzle. But when 3D printing, we usually print in thinner layers than the width of the nozzle. Again, we were saying that this is probably a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Well, 3D printers often print 0.2 millimeter layers or 0.1 or 0.05, but we'll stick with 0.2 just to keep things simple. And that height is half the width of the nozzle itself. So that's kind of a finer resolution. Even better, due to the orientation of the letter, let's say we're printing a raised letter. The printer is going to run along laying this layer down and when it reaches the letter, all it has to do is bump up a little bit and then go back down. Bump up a little bit and then go back down. Even though it's a circle, it can get a more sharp shape on the bottom here. These sharp points right here, as long as they aren't thinner than 0.2 millimeters, they are easy to print. So that's why Generally speaking, printing vertically is superior. Now let's look at some prints that seem to break the rules. This top print here was printed horizontally, while this bottom one was printed vertically. 
Both of these are pretty decent prints, actually. But if you look at the horizontally printed one, there are tiny holes in the R and in the O. Very minor, but they are there. The vertically printed one has a great deal of trouble on the bottom of these letters. That's because as it was printing, it needed to print on thin air, and that resulted in a lot of drooping. The exact same thing is true with these inset letters. This top one here was printed horizontally, and this one was printed vertically. Both look like fairly good prints that I'd be happy with, but if you look closely at the vertically printed one, the O here, the E, the P, and the S show inset parts that are drooping a little bit on the bottom. Once again, they were printing on thin air. Now, I didn't restrict my testing to just vertical and horizontal printing. I also tried a bunch of angles. This 45 degree angle, for example, provided an increased resolution, not quite as good as a vertical print, but better than a horizontal print, but had all the integrity, all the support of a horizontal print. As you can see, the bottom of the letters are well formed. And theoretically, I could print even further away from the surface, and it would still have a good structure. With all that said, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one other scenario where you may want to print text horizontally. This is a sign I made last year, and I'm terrible at painting. So instead, I printed the sign horizontally, printed a little bit of the way up, paused, switched film and color, printed all these black areas, paused again, switched to red, and printed this section. This was a super easy way to have color separation in extremely legible print. So we have an excellent guideline for printing typography. Generally speaking, printing vertically gives you nice, crisp letters. But there are also exceptions. If the letters you're printing are fairly simple in shape or blocky, you may want to print those horizontally. Or if the letters are separated from the base of your print significantly, that might be another case where you might want to print horizontally. Or are you using color separation per layer? Well, in that case, you pretty much can only print horizontally. While this video won't tell you exactly which technique to use in your next 3D print, hopefully it's given you the right questions to ask to find out. And if you're still unsure, do test prints. Do lots of test prints. Ultimately, that's what this video was about. I have an upcoming project that needed a nameplate, and I wasn't very happy with the legibility. So, I experimented, and now I have some good ideas on what direction I want to go. Hopefully you do too. Until next time, thanks for watching.